<rire> qui Girard. Gia. Gia. Mr. Happiness. Mr. Happiness for you, Monsieur Bonheur. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you so much for coming back, being here, continuing our discussion. I'm really hoping all the listeners had an opportunity to listen to the episode before this one where you and I just start really touching base on the process of my own healing journey, your healing journey, what you've gone through, steps that were helpful, and also steps that I even didn't even know existed. <laughs> there's so much to learn out there. There's, there's so many gifts, you know, so many to learn. And I think life is a wonderful journey of continuously learning and to learn, oh God, I'm getting serious so fast. Okay, I need my, my seriousness. <laughs> this, this is my warning. If we ever get too serious too fast, I mean, getting serious is fine. Yes. But if we're getting there too fast. Got you. <laughs> I got you. Well, this is going to be our signal. So, uh, letting go. So, in order to grow, nourish, but also letting go. And, and we, we often look so much for nourishment, mm. but we forget, we forget the other half of nourishment is letting go. If not, like, like you know, some people say, I feel bloated. We can be, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'm sorry, it's Tuccino. Tuccino is my little friend. He, he went to uh, Russia. A pig. Yeah, Tuccino. It, it actually means bacon. That's, that's his name. So uh, he went to me to Russia, to Guatemala, to Peru. Anyway, so uh, letting go is about mm -hmm. what it says. Okay. So, you know what? I was yeah. just remembering when you first arrived this morning, the first thing, one of the first things you'd said was, I didn't show up as Mr. Happiness today. You said, remember how that? You said, I just, yeah. I'm just here. Here's key. <laughs> if he comes out that's okay <laughs> you know but I mean ne next time it, it, whenever if, if you guys ask for it I'll come as Mr. Happiness there's not much of a difference but yeah. you know we, we, we won't go into letting go we will go into something else for sure well you know what mystery. I mystery mystery oh okay let's be present yes definitely so Lorraine, thank you. Thank you guys for, for welcoming me into your home. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I was thinking about just this past week, the different things that we've gone through. You went through a physical pain. Oh, my God. And yeah. I went through emotional pains. And I'm interested to know how we both arrived here in such great moods, celebrating, I singing all morning. <laughs> yes, true. We've been singing. We have been. You know. Couple of weeks, I, I I was on my fourth. I couldn't walk mm. as much as the pain was so big, and I couldn't sleep because the pain was so constant, so big. And there you, you had go. a sciatic. You had sciatic pain. Well, I called it a sciatic pain, but then when I saw finally saw an osteopath and uh, acupuncture, then they didn't see it as a sciatic. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, energy. Blocked energy, and we'll get in, into that later. What about you? What what uh, what was so painful emotionally in the last weeks, and that today you you're with a smile? Well, I think what's painful is when you're watching, um, like I'm in a situation with the legal system and you know child protection, all these things. My story is quite familiar to our regular listeners. So what's painful for me is when you see a system crumbling right before your eyes and there's nothing you can do. It's like try catching sand that is being thrown at you with slippery hands. Mm. I mean, it's just things that like stick to you, but it's going to fall through. So I, f I felt this helplessness, but then at the same time, everything that I suspected would happen is happening now. Mm. And so... It's almost like I've mentally prepared myself. But when it did happen, I still had that sadness of, God, I can't believe 
this is happening. I can't believe enablers are operating on all different levels of consciousness, Yeah, you know? Um, and I just have to keep working on myself. So when we spoke the last time, you told, talked to me about two things that I really hadn't touched on before, which okay. was the clean slate. Yeah. When I'm entering uh, a situation with somebody that I've had conflict for in the past or a disagreement or how can I get into this energy field again without any residue from what's happened before? Like, that was challenging for me. Mm -hmm. And what I did was just thank them. Mm. Thank them for coming in my life. Thank you for the, the lessons. Thank myself for receiving the, the lesson. And what am I going to learn this time? And that's kind of helped me get through that. So whenever I go to the daycare and I see these people that I don't particularly like so much, I, in my heart, thank you. Thank you for taking care of my child. Thank you for, um, thank you for being yourself. And thank us for being a better parent, you know. And there's two, you know, there's parenting to the, the, the people around us, of course. And when, when we have children, that's a fact. You know, that's, that's a physical it is. fact. Yes. You know, it's not a question of choice. Oh, today you're my son and tomorrow. No, it, I choose something. No, mm -hmm. there's something. I don't identify as a parent today. <laughs> Are you transparent? <laughs> so, but uh, the thing is, when you have a physical being up that came out of you, you know, and, and that's there, there's no choice or question of being a parent. But parenting our own self. Mm -hmm. uh, God, how much do we abandon ourselves? How much do we mistreat ourselves? How much do we are we not listening to ourselves? Mm -hmm. And um, for me, the, the 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 start of the whole process is awareness. And what is awareness for you? What when, when you hear that word, awareness? What what same thing for you guys out there? What comes to your mind when you hear the word awareness? When I hear the word awareness, it makes me curious. It really sparks my curiosity. Like I'm supposed to be putting out feelers for things that are happening around me. And it could be awareness spatially. It could be emotional awareness. Um, there could be, there could be a, like my sexuality and like how I'm giving off that type of energy. So yeah, it makes me aware of like the clothes I put on, the food I put in my body, the words that I use. It just makes me curious. And sometimes I'm not always aware because I don't care in those moments. Like at three o'clock in the morning when I'm walking to the bathroom, I'm not really aware of my thoughts. Because I'm just wanting to pee. I've woken up, finished peeing. I will say sitting on the toilet because I forgot. <laughs> Midnight story. Yeah, TMI. We could have to do podcast on. Actually, I get most of my ideas during the night. Yeah. So I, I wake up like you, having to use the the, the washroom, um, and sometimes my mind just starts to work mm. um, normally I give it 10 minutes like okay. I go back in bed for okay. 10 minutes and if after 10 minutes I see okay it's like mm, 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 mm. no I get up I make myself some something warm to drink and I write yeah uh, I have a keeper journal and so aware part of my awareness journey is keeping a journal and 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 that's what you know in my coaching that's like that's the number one thing i advise people to do and many are uh, they never had any and uh, they don't see the point um, how do you start a journal you know so we get into those issues but the idea of for me 
it starts with awareness. We, we both do improv, mm -hmm. you know, theater improv. And that famous two words, what are these two words? You say it's, it's yes, yes and. and. Oh, and we forget. I, we, we, we do forget. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not a matter of how many months or years you've been doing it. Uh, once your, your emotions, your ag, ag, agmidala somewhere in your brain gets, gets working, it, it's like, no, but, no, but, yeah. no, but. Yeah. It's like awareness is, and that's what I love from doing improv. It, it was a practice ground to start to be aware, to listen. So Yes, and also challenge, your, challenge yourself because sometimes we'll have an, um, a physical reaction to a suggestion on stage in improv. Well, let's just someone, like if someone mm. were to, the other day I had a show and I was sharing with them my emotional issues and they said, is there anything that you don't want to talk about? Mm. And I said, I don't want to do anything with court and I don't want to do anything with children. Oh, God. Because yeah. I knew that my body would react mm. and I would, I wouldn't, because I was so emotional, I wouldn't let my intelligence take over in that moment. I would have, my emotional wave would have been so full of a pull. I probably cry, would have cried in that scene. I probably mm. would have had a monologue moment where I would project all my pain out into that crowd. You know, so, yeah, this is one of the things I'm realizing. Sometimes if you haven't done the emotional work, no matter how smart you are or intelligent you are, those emotions will take over if you're, if you're, if you're triggered or, you know. Uh, led down a path that you're not ready to go down yet. And if you're not in a safe environment, yes, you know, because my belief, you know, life is a gift. It, it, it's an amazing gift. And each second you breathe that you're alive on this earth is to heal. Now, at, at one point I asked myself, what does that mean? Again, healing, that's such a, you know, a, a word where that everybody can put their own definition. But I just find that, that our beingness is about growth and healing is for me synonym with growth mm -hmm. with just growing uh, so it's a natural process and it's when you're in a safe environment growth can happen and when you're in that not in a secure environment that like you say like doing that improv say don't see these words and that word because it was not a place for you to get in touch with your feelings. So not right there. feelings yeah. are amazingly important. They're they're real. They they are, they are, they are who you are. So always love your feelings. Always love yourself. But be aware of in which environment they come out. Yeah, exactly. Yes, so, because they have to come out, right? They have to. Otherwise, it's going to stay in your body, and it can manifest. Something else, just like you were talking yeah, about so, earlier. Yes. Oh my God, I couldn't walk. So <laughs> it's true. It's like I was kind of regular walking, and then I came back. Okay, so it's you know the 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 straw that broke the, the camel's back. back. Okay, yeah. so uh, my mother had passed away like a month ago. I had to give workshops in, in hospitals, like the same type of hospitals where my mother was, mm. and this was new. All of these, I was drinking wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was drinking, eating a lot of sugar. That was my way of coping yes. at that point. So something happened on a Monday night, and maybe I'll tell later, but an experience where I really, I hated myself. Basically, I, I felt like a total failure. And when I came back from that evening, I started limping. I, I couldn't walk. I just couldn't walk. When I got home, it felt like I had actually a knife running through my leg, like mm. on, on my right leg. Uh, never had that kind of pain before. Uh, I, I do run sometimes, mm -hmm. so I, I, I did get leg cramps, mm -hmm. but that was not a cramp. That was really like a pinpoint stabbing. stabbing. Um, so feelings do need to come out, and if you... You know, a, a friend of mine I was talking to said, well, Guy, what were the signs maybe you could have avoided avoided mm -hmm. having this pain? But the thing about, you know, you make do, you know, you, you, you feel lousy about yourself, so you buy a, a new dress or a new clothes, or 
you know, you go shopping or you, you watch TV or you eat some chips or some beer. Or you meditate or you swim or you go to the spa or take a bath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but, but these, they, they maintain you in that structure. So yeah. there's not, it's not that it's bad to treat ourselves good, be better with, I don't know, mm -hmm. sex mm -hmm. or food mm -hmm. or sauna or swimming. Mm -hmm. But at one point, you're doing this, you're still not listening. You're, yeah. ju you're just temporarily distracting yourself. distracting yourself. Thank you. That's, the, that's you. the perfect word. So when that friend of mine asked me, but Guy, you didn't see the warning signs and says, well, I had to go to that extreme of pain because it was no longer for me viable to say to find a uh, equilibrium yes i hear you, know? you. exactly um, if you oh, ignore your body you ask you ask me that question when your body what do you do when your body cries and you don't listen well it cries louder it shouts yeah 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 when your soul yeah i mean your so, soul yes. gets into your body and then anyway so through uh, acupuncture through a lot of reading i got into what is my body trying to tell me okay and in, in, in a nutshell, uh, my mother who passed away, she, she was 93, and she still hated my father. No. And I'm not saying this like mean-spirited to her. I love my mother. I, I accompanied her to her, her dad, to the new world. But, you know, it's like a fish in the water. And it, it's, it's actually just a few days ago, even maybe yesterday, that I finally got the notion that if at 93 my mother still hated my, my father because of the divorce and whatever stories they had, well, when I was 10 years old, when I was 20, 30, 40, you know, I was raised in a household of hate. And that's like, that's in my body. That's the, the, the knife. And then I discovered... You know, when you have a pain, it's somewhere in your body. Sometimes even that pain is a distraction for where the real yes. pain is. Yes. And then I started to feel my left leg. And suddenly my left leg came alive with, with such an extreme contra contraction. It's like a cramp, but a thousand times worse. I never felt such a pain. I worked in it. And, uh, and these are all metaphors. I'm not saying my mother is in my leg and whatever. It's metaphors. You, yeah. Your body doesn't use words. It only uses images. Mm -hmm. That's the way it speaks. So in my other leg was my father, okay. which I, I've never... I mean, I've had a neutral relationship with him. Okay. That's fine. Okay. And but then what came from my father's side, from my, my heritage, is... The uh, regret. Oh, my okay. father regret the divorce. My father regret means? never being able to say, you know, I love you mm -hmm. to 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 hug me mm -hmm. or to. He has a lot of resentment. Maybe, yeah. Thank you. Maybe, yeah. I, but my mother was anger. My f I, I, and regret is. I, I guess it would be self. Resentment, mm -hmm, self hatred, mm -hmm. and stuff yes, like that. Yes. Uh, doubting yourself, and anyway, so to understand and getting to know these things that God, I got so much anger in my life, but luckily I'm powerless, so I never was somebody who mm -hmm. lashed out at people. So, Guy physically lashed out. Yeah, physically yeah. myself. Even as an adult, I was always powerless. So I had this anger inside, but I, I didn't become a, a narcissistic, mm -hmm. abusive husband mm -hmm. or father or something like that. Mm -hmm. So in, in my, you know, in my mother's generation, her anger was treated in another way. It, it, for, in my body, I was totally powerless. And maybe that's, you know, from my father's side, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, he had regrets and being powerless. So uh, uh, just understanding these two, these 
fantasies. Again, I'm not saying it's true. That's that physically what happened, but it's like that's the way my body, the metaphors it used to bring me aware. And being aware of this, the pains went away. Wow. Did you change anything in your routine? Totally. I, I change everything. Okay, oh, okay. my God. Okay. But not physically, mentally. Yes. Because the... the uh, so the, on the Monday night, when that bang, when the knife yes. went through my leg, what happened is actually I had to do a presentation. Okay. Very simple. I, I started a, a stand-up class. Okay. And uh, we had to do a three-minute, three, three minute, you know, like a stand-up guy mm -hmm. goes on stage and says, hey, this yeah. is me, uh, and make jokes. And I, I always felt I had no content in my life. Okay. Like, okay. what am I going to talk about? And I asked the teacher about that, say, but I have no content. How? What am I going to make fun? I, I don't get it. And he didn't get that. I didn't get it. Anyway, so... I did a so-so presentation. It mm -hmm. was in front of the class. It was okay. But I felt an utter failure. Mm. Like, I, I, I hated myself. Mm. You're critical. Uh, extremely. Yeah. And this was, my, so the, the, the hatred from my mother, the regret from my father, they combined. And my, my body said, That's it. Fuck you, Guy. Exactly. Like, I'm not taking this anymore. Right? I'm not taking this anymore. Exactly. You know, it's like, seriously, wake up, like, <laughs> <laughs> like wake up. You know, at 64 years old, stop carrying these things, Thank these you. feelings. I wrote this this morning. The hardest thing to face is a buried memory, because you gotta dig deep. To, to face it. And that's what a lot of people are hoping that they don't have to face in this lifetime is their buried memory. So they're like, I'm just going to keep living this mundane, everyday life. But the body's saying, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had enough. Sorry, guys. Sorry, too. We apologize. Yeah. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> Delayed. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so that's what, uh, that was one thing, the clean slate, and that got me to the point of letting, like you said, letting things go, and it really did, for me, increase my energy, like I started going to the gym, um, I started go walking more, uh, I, like it just changed my whole perspective on living, but then the hardest thing was, and that's one of the reasons why I, I uh, kind of pushed back the airing of our the episode was because I didn't know or understand how to celebrate my life as it is right now. Celebrate mm -hmm. everything that happened to me. Like I didn't, how do I celebrate being abused? But I, I was going to make a joke about that, but it's, yeah. I, I know, I know, but we can't like celebrate again. It's damn words. Yeah. Damn words. It's like celebrate. Oh, well, come That's on, what I was celebrate. Like, celebrate. And it's like, no, I mean, there's so many colors and flavors to that word celebrate. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I shock people sometimes when I say, you know, at three years old, I was raped. And actually, I'm, I'm not happy about it, but there was a gift inside because at three years old, when I was raped, I closed up myself. I totally, you know, <clears throat> like three layers of lead and, you know, like totally closed, 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 closed up myself. And I, I, I lived my life without feeling like, like a zombie, not even like a zombie because a zombie has needs. It's like brain, mm. brain or mm. something. But I was just going on through life, you know, being the good boy. Mm. Oh, that's another subject. The mm. good boy mm. or the good girl. So at three years old, I, I was raped and that. I was locked. But the beauty of that, the gift of that, which is like a celebration, is that after years of suffering and when I finally was able to find that ball and to gently opening up mm -hmm. and that the three-year-old little gi came out, yeah. the gift is that at three years old, you see the magic in life. 
you see the poetry in life, you see the beauty in life, you hear the music. Just look at the three years old, how he wakes up and he sees life. It, it's magical. It's, I know it's kind of hard to, to listen to this, but... You if know, you if, know it, you know it. The people who are listening, people who are watching this, if they've experienced it, this magic that you're talking about, you, you know it. And if it hasn't happened yet, we look crazy. And that's okay, because it... You'll look crazy one day too. When you get it. <laughs> when you get it. When you get it. Yeah. And, and it's like, because people who weren't abused or people who weren't mm. stuck in boxes, what happened? They go to uh, daycare, they go to primary school, and in primary school, what are you taught? Don't use your imagination. Follow the rules. And so all this magic that you had, this, this, Beauty of life, you, you're losing yeah. it. Well, it's getting covered. I don't think we lose it. It's getting covered. And we tight, like you said, we close ourselves yeah. up until somebody or yourself is brave enough to take off these levers or a shock happens you, to you. You take an art class, you take music class, you improv, improv you follow your, your instincts. So, yes, right? For me, it's, it's ex exploded. You know, when yeah. I open this, so that's why today I can be Mr. Happiness because, you know, I didn't know that love exists. Ooh. I only discovered love exists at, at uh, 55 years old. Mm. Uh, I was going through the routine, routine of life, and that really scared me. Once you understand that real love exists, that you can spend your whole life not, not knowing what love is, and you think that you know yes. what it is. So I, I'll just finish. Sorry, no, 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 I, I know no. you're just kind of bursting. Oh, yeah, I know. I and, and it's like... Okay. So what that means that when I finally discovered what love is, and that's in my book. Sorry, it's a plot, but it's true. It's yeah, in my book. It's oh, but by, by the way, yesterday I had a, a good talk with a friend suggestion. It's true that the book is kind of a bit of a long read, but you can start at, at book three. Instead of starting at the beginning, start at the last bit. This way you get all the fun, juicy part, and then you can do chapter book one and book two. So it's like book one, book two, book three in, in one book. This way, it's not too heavy. Anyway, so um, when I discovered love, it took me a couple of years to say the word out loud that love existed. And then finally, I, I call myself a love clown, a messenger of love. But it took years after, discovered, after discovering that love exists to dare to say out loud love mm. that took years. So it's the same thing now with Mr. Happiness. Mr. Happiness, Monsieur Bonheur, it, it's just, uh, that's it. It's like, this is all new to me, but this is my three years old. You know, my three years old, it's like life is, it is fun. Life, life yes. is a game. Yes. Life is a play. And th this is to get back to your, your table rase, to clean slate. Once you've, and that celebration is once you've, you've tasted that happiness, that love that was always there, then you see that whatever shit is happening presently is just superficial because under it, there's, so the celebration is to say, ah, oh, yes, it's like you're in a plane. You know, you're, you're, you're sailing or in a boat. I like the idea of a plane. And it's like, ah, you're, you're, on vac you're going on vacation. You, you got your, your beautiful Hawaiian shirt. Mm. And you, you want to you contest. Everything's paid for. You know, you've got this amazing air-conditioned condo on a beach okay. somewhere. It's going to be gorgeous. You just know it. You just feel it. It's going to be the time of your life. And you're in the plane. And suddenly, okay, let's let's do the, the improv here. There's the turbulence. Okay. There's the oh oh my god oh, this is your captain speaking. Uh, don't worry about it for the next two minutes. Just keep bottling up. Okay, so of course when you're doing when in the middle of it, you're kind of freaking out. So, oh my god, I'm gonna die. What's gonna happen to me? It's it's awful. It's the worst day of my life. But you're on that journey of going to the island, mm -hmm. of going to, so you know that, so the celebration is to say, oh yeah, 
of course, I'm having turbulence in my life now. Mm -hmm. But I'm having turbulence because I'm going in, somewhere. Where? I'm going somewhere. Exactly. I'm enjoying life. Yes. That's why I'm having turbulence. If you stay home, close door, lock door, don't take any risks, isolate, you won't have turbulence in your life. I hear you. Well, you will have turbulence in your life. You'll have inner turbulence. And you won't have people around you who understand because you haven't created that healthy, safe space for yourself. And when we're healing, safe this, space. when we're healing, there's a responsibility that you have to yourself is to create that healthy, safe space. And it takes time because it's very possible that you've attracted a lot of people who are have pain bodies like your own, mm -hmm. and they might not be able to hold space. So you might have to start replacing the people close to you with people who can can hold space for you that are safe for you to share how you're feeling without any projection who are basically people who are doing the work themselves the point that i wanted to make was earlier you <laughs> mentioned about being three years old and something that i've just realized with even with myself if you have a baby book or old report cards or um evaluation that you've had when you're in preschool Ask your parents for it or try to find it yourself. Read through it. Read through how your teachers or educators described you as a very young child because that's how you are. One thing I've learned working with so many children over these years, the way a child is at two years old is how they are. It's it, They're showing mm. you exactly who you are. And we change them over time, which is fine because that's part of evolution. But when I got into improv, it started to awaken parts of me that have been dormant for a long time. Like I was a competitive dancer from the age of three until 12. We traveled a lot when I was a child. I missed a lot of school. So I didn't really have really bonded relationships with in any individual. So we, yeah, we traveled a lot. I was on stage. But one of the things I remember reading in one of my reports was, Lorraine is very quiet and very shy. But when I'm on stage, I was a complete opposite. So when I'm now doing improv, you've seen me, I, I wake up on stage. Mm. But I started doing musical improv, and that's a little bit different. Because you're singing from a place from inside. You're bringing out. And one of the, I have two teachers in improv, musical improv, and both teachers have said the same thing. Lorraine, you're quiet, and you you got to have confidence. You can do this. And it brought me back to this little mm. girl. It brought me back to this three-year-old. And I've been, I've been kind of staying in that space in the past two weeks going, okay, Lorraine, if this is part of who you are, if you are that shy, little, quiet girl, why did you have to come, become so loud? And it was, <laughs> it's true. And it's because I was the last of five and I was ignored quite a bit. And mm. I realized the only, my survival technique is to be loud. But my comfort zone is quiet. And it, 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 it happened when I allowed myself to come back to that little girl. And, but I had a reference point of who that little girl was mm. because I had these reports that my mother had saved or my parents had mm. saved. So I, I challenge you to read about who somebody described you as a child and see how similar it is to who you truly are right now. And I can almost guarantee there's going to be so many parallels, if not matches. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and, and also if you have photos. Oh, yeah. Photos when you were a baby. Yeah. Um, see what comes up to you. And, and that's something for yourself. Yeah. First, I, eventually you can show them to other people, but this is this is for yourself. So first, look at the picture and just breathe. Mm. Feel. Look, yeah. Yeah. Wh whatever comes up when you see these 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 picture, um, your your body is gonna send you messages. You you might start crying spontaneously. Uh, you might start feel anger. Uh, you might start, there's so many feelings, but just um, whatever comes up, write it in your journal and cherish, cherish it. These are all messages, uh, healing, 
uh, growth uh, messages. Uh, there's one word that you said before that that really hit me. Mm. Uh, confidence. Mm. And uh, I, I love to play with the etymology. Uh, cut down words. Some, yeah. Sometimes they make sense. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But I know Transfer. for whatever. Was... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, uh, the confidence. I don't know if it's true. But con, I know in, 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 in Spanish means with mm -hmm. or avec. And fidance, that I don't know. But I would put faith. So, act with confidence mm -hmm. is to act with faith. faith. But what kind of faith? Faith in yourself. Yeah. And I think that's where le, le bas blesse le plus. That's in French Quebecois. Pour, uh, that's where the, 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 it hits the most painful point. Mm. Le bas blesse le plus. Le bas blesse le plus. La so, blanc blesse le bas de sac. Ah, le bas. Le bas blesse. Blesse. Le plus. Le plus. Le plus. Le euh, bas blesse le plus. <laughs> bless you. Blesse le plus. <laughs> He's having fun. Okay, so, um, so, when my leg hurt, confidence, when I hated my performance was because of mm -hmm. that. I had no faith that just being myself was enough. Mm -hmm. um, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good point. Um, for me, like, yes, just sleeping. Well, before I go to sleep sometimes, I just do a whole, like a body scan and literally turn things off. I'm not thinking about this. I let this go. Thank you. Okay. And there's this lightness. Mm. And then I Love dr this. drift off to sleep. But if I go to bed heavy, I always feel it in my drawers. <laughs> God. My teeth are like this. I'm like, uh, okay, what's going on, Lorraine? I just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. And this is, you know, some of the things I've been reading up now because of, of my leg and the pain and meditation and taking time. Um, it's about mus mus muscle, muscling. Mm -hmm. like, like building muscle? Yeah, building okay. muscle, but our emotional muscles. Ooh. It's like, so uh, most of us, I don't want to suppose anything, but... In, uh, I, I've, I've mastered, I've, I've got steroids on my anger muscles. I've got steroids on my reacting muscles. Uh, what about getting steroids on my zen calm muscles? Mm. And it's like what you just said now, it's like, yeah, going to sleep, scanning, uh, basically things that are not taught. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, promoted in society of just take 30 seconds to breathe. And 30 seconds is nothing, you no. know. Uh, I was just uh, last night uh, listening to a video and it says to start muscling yourself is do every 15 minutes, you use a, a, an app, app, and every 15 minutes just do three deep breathing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that you actually get a new habit. And of course, you won't go you, through your whole life every 15 minute breathing, but it's the uh, return on investment, ROI, the idea that a little bit of something is gonna get a whole yes. lot of results. Yes. So doing yes. just some little practice of breathing, like every hour, uh, <laughs> I saw a video this morning. I mean, it makes so much sense. Yeah. I won't do it here because everything's going to fall down. Okay, okay. But it's called shaking. Oh, yeah. It works. I do you know with, shaking? I do that with the children all the time. We start our day like this. We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Oh, yeah. We love it. And that's why I love working with children. And it's yeah. like uh, <laughs> Peter Levine, or I don't know if I say his name perfectly, Peter Levine or Levine, okay. uh, who talks about trauma. Um, and 
part of of his uh, exercise route, soma somatic experience, yes. Yes. exercise, yes, is is shaking. Yes. Basically, uh, you start, you jump, 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 and just move everything. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, his his concept was that. Uh, when you're facing the trauma, you, everybody knows of the fight or For flight, flight yes. response. But there's one in between, which is the freezing, which is, you know, you get the fun. The, yeah, exactly. The fun in front of the dog. And, and, and I'm sure I saw this in, in video, but uh, the cat and mouse. Yes. So the the mouse will just kind of uh -huh. ho hoping that something yeah. different, you know. So there is a mechanism in our body where we just go numb. Yes. And that's normal. And what he was saying is that uh, we 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 stay in the numb state, and we live our whole life in the numb state. And the shaking is is part of his is uh, awakening. Awakening that the body we, we don't need to shake for an hour, but basically you want to. we we we're we're, sh we're frozen. As a natural response to trauma, but we forget to unfreeze ourselves. So this, this, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm adding it into my introduction when I do group workshops. Mm. Uh, I did singing, I did humming, I did breathing, I did, you know, one yeah. of my favorite one is, uh, you know, you breathe in peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, I breathe in peace. And, and breathe out love. Breathe out love. Yes, there's a song for that. I love this song. You know, and these things. Mm. And so I'm adding shaking. Yes. Just basically, and it's, it's just like, yes. like if you do, people who do laughter yoga, they say fake it until you, you make, make it. it. Yes. But it's basically the idea that it's, it's reverse engineering. Right. When you really laugh a lot. It's physical, yes. you know. You you move. Your 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 air comes in so deeply. Right. So laughter yoga is the idea of consciously you start with moving your body, mm -hmm. and so moving. that the breathing and the lightness comes in. So it's Absolutely. reverse engineering. So shaking is the same thing. It's like don't wait for your body to understand that the trauma or the the unsafe environment is, is gone. Start with the shaking, and that will create the hormones, will create the release. Yep, yep, yep. And then you'll see more Got clearly. You. I have a theory that just came to my mind. Because, okay, so like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of children, 80s even, we played outside a lot. I don't know about you, but we were not allowed inside <laughs> as children. Like we yeah. were outside often. So even though we were dealing with childhood trauma, we had a lot of time to move, yeah. to shake, to jump, yeah. to fall, to run. So now since the 90s now, the children have been more inside, more stagnant, more playing video games. And that's okay because they're sitting with their trauma. Yeah. They're sitting with their pain. And now these children have grown up, maybe unhealthy, maybe overweight, and they're moving. They're getting in shape because they want to deal with their body. They want to deal with their health. And stuff is coming out and they're healing and they're realizing, oh my God, I was going through trauma as a child, but I didn't know because I was just sitting with it. And now that I'm shaking and it's mm. coming out and they're, they, now these people healing are having children and they're starting to see the patterns. Oh my goodness, you're sitting too long. That's what I did as a child. I need to get you yeah. to ballet, tap, uh, swimming lessons, hockey lessons, and not realizing the overwhelmness and the disconnect because, um, not only are they not having the conversations about possible traumas or things that are coming out, they're dealing with their own stuff. So it's, it's good, but I'm, it just, it just made me realize that, wow, maybe that's why we have this over planning parent that's putting their child in these activities because they're realizing their own trauma and kind of projecting like, I don't want this to happen to my child. So I'm going to do this thing, but it's still good because it's allowing the conversations to come up. I don't know. That just came to me when you were sharing that. I'm like, yeah, that makes yeah, a lot no, of no, sense. No, no. Like, now there, there yeah. is something as a as a generation, as a society. Yeah. I mean, we are individual, but as as a collective, there are a lot of of uh, 
decisions being made that are, you know, we're part of a movement. Yes, and, we are. Uh, we really that's truly interesting. are. Yeah. It's so true. I tell this story often. We won't go much longer, but I'll never, ever forget when I first moved to Montreal and I went on a subway and I saw this man. He must have been in his, like, maybe late 60s. And this guy was in a pink shirt. He had pink nails, a pink... And this was in, like, 2010, okay? Okay. Pink shoes, everything in a backpack. And he was just sitting there crying. And we, those are the old metros back then when it was just carts. Like, mm. before it wasn't the one yeah, you could yeah, walk yeah, away separated. through. Yeah, so he was just crying. And I said to him, like, you know, are you okay? And he's just like, he said, my mom died. And she never let me wear pink. She just never let me wear pink. He was all in pink on the metro crying. And I just thought, wow. Like, he held all, mm. all that. And it was like, it's a release. He had to let. It, he had to do it. So it's like it's crazy how much we hold in the memories, yeah. you know. And there, there, you know, and and on the other level, there's symbols. Yeah. You know, so um, his his body uh, expressed itself through pinkness. Mm. Let's put it this way. Um, I like that. But the end goal was not to be pink. Like, yeah, because he still wasn't happy. Yes, I hear what you're saying. It was the expression. It was the freedom. It, it's, a, it's a freedom. Yeah. It's, it's a step towards something. And the mind, and that's something maybe we spoke last time or not, but, you know, I, I speak about the five levels yes. of being. Uh, uh, the mind, the heart, the, the spirit, the, the body, the spirit, and the, the universe. And the function of the mind is to make sense of the world. That's, that's its only function. So it seeks patterns. That's it. So, so by definition, the mind is always right. Always, always right. That's its function. You know, you couldn't live in this world if you would doubt your experience, what you saw. Uh, you you stick on beliefs, even if they make you miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how much the mind uh, plays over us. So mm -hmm. his pinkness was a symbol that is mine was sending him. But underneath that, there's another purpose. There's another need. There's another mm -hmm. um, growth wanting to happen. Um, could it be something like, sorry, could it be something like, I want to be free and I want my mom to see me being free? Like, I want to be recognized in my freedom? Uh, it, that's part of it. Okay. And... I would say the the not the solution. I don't like this, but the the way of thought is that it's never going to be a thought that's going to solve your answer. Mm, that's so true. Replacing one set of belief by another one set of belief means that you still don't trust the universe, yeah, yeah. which is number five. You still don't see that life is a gift, which is number four. So uh, four, number four, is about trust. And number five is about faith. Mm. And it, that's why we, we celebrate. And faith doesn't mean religion. It just means that you just know. Yeah, you there's just, a knowing. You just know yeah. that you know. And, and the, the thing is that people don't have faith anymore, don't have trust so they put all their faith and trust in systems what they know. Yep, and systems that are failed. And they still put their faith in failed systems. I'm just going to take a moment to be mad about that. All right, back. <laughs> you know, so we can laugh yeah. because we have faith. Yes, we, we have, do. We have trust. 
But as soon as you define your faith as uh. in, oh God, I, I, I have faith in God, I have faith in, in karma, yeah. in Vishnu, you, you lost it. It's not that kind of faith because you just put faith back into a belief, exactly. into a notion. You cannot understand you know? it exactly. It's so, and that's what we celebrate. That's so to, to do a, a whole loop on how we began yes. this, this uh, meeting today. Say, okay, uh, Guy, you told me about uh, clean slate and to celebrate and say, how can I celebrate? This is so hard, all this, this pain and stuff like that. But when you're in touch with the faith that this life is a gift, you know, and, and whatever happens in your, your life, it's just a story. It's just something yes. happening. But there's something so much more bigger than, than you that you are. Yes. Uh, and it, it's this amazing gift to be alive. And that's what I'm, you know, that's what Mr. Happiness is celebrating. Yes. It's, it's reminding people that, you know, there's a way. There's a way. Can you explain for the listeners for one last time that those five steps, we know the last two. What are the first three? The mind, mm -hmm. the heart, mm -hmm. the body. Yes. So the spirit yes. is four and the universe. The universe. So with the celebration and the queen slate and those five steps, because I know there was... Yeah. What, yeah. What were those five? So uh, forgive. Yes. So the mind, you it's all about letting go, mm -hmm. but the mind is about forgiveness. Yes. Okay. Uh, with the heart is to have no expectations. Yes, let go. Yeah. Yes. You know. So forgive what is, what happened. So the mind is 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 the mind is the past. Because the mind the function of the mind is to find patterns. Where do you find patterns? In the past. That's it. So wow. the mind lives in the past. As soon as you're... And we know this as improv. Yes! I just you thought know? about that. Yeah. It's, when you do improv, you have your idea. If you have your idea, you're not listening to your partner. Thank you. It's so true. And you're fucking up the scene. So the mind nobody, only operates in the past. The mind... By definition, the mind only operates in the past. It's it's that simple. I mean, it's not easy, well, yeah. but it's that simple. The the okay. heart operates in the future. Yes. The heart, okay. The the heart gives a direction. I want to go in this way. Yes. I want to make those choices. I want this to happen this way or that way. Okay. So the mind give up your, your beliefs give give up forgive mm -hmm. the the heart is give up your expectation mm -hmm. okay uh, the body is the clean slate okay okay so basically clean slate you just you know you're totally forgiven stuff okay. like that um the fourth one is uh gratitude, gratitude. thank you of course I yeah know this one and and gratitude and the last one is to have fun to play to celebrate yes you know oh so, my gosh this, um, i was really really not sad but i was disappointed that i didn't know what the clean slate and celebration was and i'm such a keener in my spiritual growth that i really really wanted to get this but not get it for my ego get it for my heart for like my life my soul mm. so it feels so good to set that intention, do the work, which was a lot of meditation, a lot of prayer, a lot of alone time, a lot, a lot of alone time, a lot of reflection, talking to people who I trust and are knowledgeable that can, that give me space and time. It's like, you've planted a seed, like, I'm gonna let you go now, <laughs> go deal with that, and then come back and we have this discussion. So this helps so much. So, and, and yeah. And uh, the, this table of, of these five, the, the mind, the heart, the body, the spirit, and the soul, the, the universe, okay. is on my website. Okay. So you can just go on the, my website, and you have all this in a very clean, free, easy table, though, those five states of being, uh, what you have to give away, what you have to let go for each of them, what you practice, and what you need to 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 let in. So uh, I don't know. So my name is very simple. It's yes. there, uh, Gijia. So you just add that add a com dot com yep. to there, and that will bring you to my website. And you, you you'll have those tools. Uh, you can print out this, uh, uh, download the image, keep it on your phone, 
and uh, it'd be a pleasure to to be able to help you and uh, as a coach you can always reach out to me